Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. I am in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Judd Coon Chevrolet, and I'm checking out a 2016 Chevrolet Equinox in the LS trim level. So the Chevrolet Equinox is a really neat crossover SUV that's very roomy and has a lot of features. So let's go ahead and check it out. So this has the 17 inch alloy wheels, which are looking pretty sharp. They're painted silver and they're not too tacky or anything. They look really good. And you also have four wheel ventilated disc brakes. That's right, all four wheels have ventilated disc brakes. Typically you'd have solid disc brakes in the back and ventilated in the front, but this is all four. So here in the front, we have projector, halogen powered projector beams here for the low, low beam side. And then the high beams is a reflector system powered by halogen bulbs as well. So the color of this vehicle is just plain black. No fancy name for this color, it's just black. Now the interior is interestingly called jet black. So pretty nice looking color, especially with the chrome accents here on the front, looking pretty sharp. So this is what the key looks like. It's a uh, key fob with the lock and unlock buttons there. You also have a panic button and a switchblade key. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a look, quick look at the window sticker here so we can get some information off of it using the pause button, of course. And you'll notice that here at the bottom, it has a plastic trim across the edge here in the front, you also have some mud guards there. But this helps with keeping the vehicle uh, scratch free. So basically, that's the area of the vehicle where you know road debris and stuff like that's going to impact the vehicle. So this helps with scratches. It also keeps the, the vehicle cleaner looking uh, for longer. So let's go ahead and take a look here in the passenger side door. Okay, so there's the inside of the passenger side door. It's all black. You do have a little stitching look right here. Soft to the touch surfaces here where your arm would go. You also also have a little pocket in here to put some stuff. It goes all the way down, so you can probably prop up your cell phone in there. That'd be pretty cool. Have a bottle holder and a large storage pocket there in the door as well. Plenty of leg room here in the front. Manual adjustments here for the cloth seats. And you can see it has quite a bit of uh, of a bolster system right here on the sides, which is pretty cool. It's, not, it's soft though, so it doesn't intrude on you while you're sitting in the seat. And the back of the seat is not quite so uh, bolstered, but check out this textured mesh fabric here in the center. It has like a white on the inside and has just kind of keeps you gripped in the seat there. It's pretty comfortable. So you see the plenty of leg room here in the front. You have a little storage pocket there on the side of the console and the glove compartment is a smooth plastic on the inside to keep, help keep it clean. Let's take a look here in the back. Alright, so there's the inside of the back door. Pretty simple. It is soft to the touch here on the, on the door here and you have a bottle holder and some storage space there as well. And with the front seat all the way back, you still have a tremendous amount of legroom, especially considering the seat is really far up, uh, so your, your knees aren't sticking up in the air. Now this seat does go forward and back, so this is the most rear position that the seat can be in. It can go really forward. The only reason why you'd want to do that is to increase your cargo space a little bit. So you can see it's kind of like a bench seat here with some bolstering to kind of simulate a, a bucket seat a little bit. You also have an armrest and cup holders here, which you can get out of the way. In case you didn't need to have a center passenger. Now the center passenger is going to enjoy some really good leg space because you do not have almost, it's almost a completely flat floor here. There's no hump at all to speak of there in the center. You also have a 12 volt power supply there. You have some mesh pockets in the back of the front seats. Your fuel door is on the passenger side, so you're gonna have to get your passengers to pump the gas for you. <laughs> now you do have the little tether cap system, which is pretty typical, and it has a little place to hang it there to keep it away from the vehicle and out of the way while you're pumping gas. Let's go ahead and take a look here in the back of the vehicle. You have some chrome accents there. You also have a backup camera 
hidden just under the emblem there. I don't know if you can see that. And you have the flat black accents as well. You also have some flat black right here. It's kind of like a, I guess you can maybe to protect the bumper from sliding stuff in and out of the vehicle or maybe even stepping on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and lift this up and see what we see. All right. Okay, so there's your cargo area. You can see it's massive, massive cargo space. You have a speaker, subwoofer speaker here on the right side. You have a little storage pocket there. And here, big one there. 12 volt power supply. You have some um, places to hook some stuff like a net pocket or whatever. Now this one has the rubber cargo mat which is highly recommended and this lifts up and your spare tires under here and you have your tools you can also utilize this space for cargo space as well if you need to kind of cram some stuff in here that that, that would uh, work as well now you notice the back seats are a 60 40 split so right in here you can actually fold down one or the other or both uh, to increase your cargo capacity and once you increase once you start folding them down you have this massive area and all, of course you can have a combination of cargo and passenger space if you need to so to start the vehicle you take your switch blade key and go ahead and pretty traditionally you just put the key in and turn it So here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see you have your accelerator pedal, brake pedal, a foot actuated uh, parking brake there. And you also have a place to put your left foot right in this area there. So that helps out with comfort on the long trips. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. So to open up the hood, there's a little latch right under here to the left of the center line. Right in here, you just move it to the right and you lift up the hood, it's very simple, and it goes up the rest of the way. You don't have to exert much effort at all. All right, so covered up in plastic, of course. That seems to be a trend nowadays in new vehicles. But anyways, underneath all the plastic, you can see a little bit of metal there, but underneath the plastic is a 2.4 liter, 182 horsepower engine, four cylinder, uh, with 172 pound-feet of torque. Now you can also get the optional six-cylinder engine in the Equinox if you want to but this one has the four-cylinder let's take a look on the inside of the driver's door now it's just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons you have your power window controls now the front are one touch down and hold it to go back up now I want to show you something real fast the actual glass here is a double pane glass with a an acoustic material between kind of sandwiched between the glass to help with uh, noise from entering in the vehicle and your side mirrors are adjusted here you just pick a side left or right and you can adjust it with this little pad and then you have your door lock controls there now the seat on the driver's side is a combination of powered and manual so to move it forward and back, you do have a manual lever there on the front. To tilt the seat, it's manual here. But to raise and lower the seat, you have this electric switch here. And to adjust your lumbar support, you have an electric switch right here. So that's pretty cool. The steering column is a tilt and telescoping steering column. So you can get that right position. Once you get it in that right position, you lock it in place with this lever there. There's your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here on the inside. Lots and lots of room here on the inside. My legs have plenty of room. I can put my feet almost straight out. I have knee room. I can put my, arm, my leg up here like that. Sometimes I like to do that. So I'm really comfortable. I have the lumbar support positioned perfectly. So let's go ahead and start here on the steering wheel. It is a synthetic steering wheel with really good thickness and comfort you have some grips there and super durable feeling uh, plastic or synthetic material whatever it is polypropylene or whatever feels like you can run it over with a tank and it's not going to mess it up it does give a little bit when you push onto it so it does you know it's not going to fatigue your hands so on the steering wheel we have some buttons here on the right side is your volume for your radio 
You can also change through your source, like AM, FM, stuff like that. You can also change through your presets by going up and down. And then over here you have your Bluetooth answer your call and also your voice recognition system there. So you can answer calls, make calls using that once you pair your Bluetooth phone with the system. So on the left side is your cruise control. You can turn it on and off with that button. You can set it by pulling this down. You can change through your speeds by going up and down and you can always cancel it right here. So right here is your turn signal and your headlight control. So you have your daytime running lights. You can turn on and off by pulling it down like that. And then you have automatic parking lights and then your headlights. Your windshield wiper controls are there on the right for the front and rear. So here's your gauges, very simple, easy to read gauges here on the sides. You have your RPMs here on the left, speedometer there on the right, engine coolant temperature here, and your fuel gauge there. So the screen here in the center has your digital compass on the bottom right and your digital speedometer. Um, so basically you can get some more information on this screen if you need to using these buttons over here, right in here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and push this menu button so you can see what it does. It goes over to the option, you can go back to trip. And then you have these arrow buttons up and down, so let's go ahead and show you there. So that on this trip part, it shows your digital speedometer is one of the options. So I'm going to scroll up, it gives you a blank screen just in case you don't want anything there. Scroll up again, it gives you, it says navigation, this vehicle doesn't have that, but it would be there. Uh, you can have a timer, which you can reset, average vehicle speed miles per gallon uh, and it'll give you like a little bar there average miles per gallon and as you drive it'll adjust so you can see you know it's not accurate now because the vehicle's so new average fuel economy it'll give you based on your uh, your prior behavior fuel range how many how long you can drive before you have to get gas and there's a trip two and trip one and it goes back to your digital speedometer so basically you get some information there. Uh, it's not really necessary to go in there and, and look at all that stuff all the time, but it's just some additional information in case you want to look at it. So right here you have your center stack. So you have the screen up here and it's a touch screen. So you can go into different information there and go back out of that. So you can use these buttons down here as well as the touch screen here. So right now, I'm going to hit source, and it's going to show you like your different sources for your radio. You can have this right now, we're in the satellite radio portion, which has your presets there at the bottom, and you know what station you're on, and has the picture there. But I'm going to hit source and change it again. It's AM, FM, and then satellite radio. You can also seek through different tracks and stuff like that. You go ahead and push the home button so you can see the different... Uh, icons here. You can play music through your um, your USB port, auxiliary input, satellite radio, AM, FM, and you can set up your phone there as well. Let's go to the next screen. You can do all kinds of settings in the configuration screen as well. You have a traditional volume knob, tune through the stations, and then you have your selection buttons right here for your uh, your presets. You have a play and pause button which is really neat. Let's go ahead and push that. There's your clocks. So you can set that up. Get information, audio information. You can adjust your tone, uh, bass, treble, mids, all that good stuff. So down here is your climate control. So you have your fan speed, your temperature, where you want the air to blow. You have the uh, defrosters for the front and rear. And down here is the buttons that I showed you for the other screen between the gauges. Neat little pocket right here. It's kind of small. Uh, it's too small to put a cell phone or something like that, but you can put your keys or just something small in that area. And it's kind of rubberized on the bottom to keep whatever you put in, uh, whatever you put in there from sliding out. Then you have a little storage pocket down in here. Actually, a really good size. You can actually put your phone there or whatever. And then you have a 12 volt power supply there. Cup holders are here. You also have an eco button in case you want to tell the vehicle that you want the the most fuel economy. You could push that. I like this uh, chrome rings around the, the cup holders there. Okay, so here's your shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can take a look at the backup camera, which will pop up right here. And that's really clear, very clear, and you can see 
from the bumper to the sky and all the way around and as you turn the steering wheel you'll see those guidelines will actually move kind of give you an estimated trajectory of the vehicle as you back up okay so let's gonna continue down here and this is a six-speed automatic transmission by the way there's neutral there's drive and then you have a manual mode in which you can cycle through the gear ratios if you need to your trash control you can turn that off if you need to spin tires or something like that you also have a neat little pocket here to stand up your cell phone or whatever you want to use it for right here so here's your armrest it's not huge and wide so you're going to kind of have to share it a little bit with your passenger if they want to use it and this lifts up and you have this well lit storage compartment with a little tray that is removable and it's pretty deep too and you have this whole area here to clutter up with your junk and there's where you'll find your USB auxiliary inputs and a 12 volt power supply and you also notice that it has these places for wires to go in and out of the compartment so you don't pinch the wires when you close the lid okay so there's your rear view mirror and it has your voice recognition on star and your emergency button there and it is a manually adjusted day and night mode so right up here you have uh, some lights so you can control one or the other you also have the ability to turn on all the lights in the vehicle by pushing it this way you can push it that way to have them turned off or you can put it in a center position to make them turn on and off with the doors so your visors have mirrors and lights there's your microphone for your Bluetooth system and these visors also extend out so in case you need to get that right spot uh, you can do that as well so let's go ahead and take a look at the visibility here in the back lots of glass back there to look out of so it's not too not too bad you can see the headrest don't get really in the way much of course you have the backup camera to help you out as well okay so there you have it let me know what you think in the comment section of the 2016 chevrolet equinox and thank you for watching and thank you to judd coon chevrolet for allowing me to show off an awesome vehicle and i'll see you guys next time